And we're back! Welcome to another Flash video tutorial using ActionScript 3.0. I'm going to go ahead and get started with the same standard procedure by creating a new ActionScript 3.0 document. And this video is going to cover the topic of tweens. Now in an earlier video we went over the idea of frames. So we can insert frames, we can insert keyframes, we can insert blank keyframes. Remember the shortcuts for those are F5, F6, and F7. And we learned how to do animation, frame by frame animation. We had to draw out every single um, image we wanted to play in our animation, and that can get very tedious. What I'm going to show you today is something called tweening, and it's pretty much a way of automating a lot of your animation. So a lot of the simple things like movement and a couple other tricks, but basically we want to work smart, not hard. So we're not being lazy, we're just being intelligent. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go ahead on my frame one and I'm going to draw I'm going to draw an oval and I'm going to have it have a well, let's let's start simple. I'll have it have a red fill. I'm going to make it a circle by holding down shift, clicking and let go. And now I have an oval or a circle. Man, I can't talk. So I'm going to go ahead and right click on frame 20 insert a keyframe and now you can see that I have my keyframe on frame 1 these filler frames extending that keyframe all the way up to frame 19 and on frame 20 I have a copy of my circle now what I was going to show you is the shape tween so I messed up a little bit I'm going to delete my circle and I'm going to draw a square and let me use my edit multiple frames tab to make sure these are lined up so I'm going to select them both uh, let me go to my alignment tool click center center and now they're centered I'm going to turn off edit multiple frames and now I'm working with my square on frame 20 so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and right click on these frames after frame 1 and click create shape tween and what this is going to do it's going to create a shape tween what a shape tween does is it tries to change your drawing from whatever shape it is now to whatever shape it is on the next keyframe that it finds. So on frame one, it's a circle, and on frame 20, it's a square. And you can see that as I change the playhead between the two, it's morphing between a circle and a square. And if you want to see something pretty cool, we can turn on onion skin, and let me show you what it does. So, or something else. so shape also kind of handles motion as well. So if I drag this out to the right, you can see now. I'm moving to the right and I'm changing from a circle to a square. Have you ever seen that show Animorphs if you're, you know, a dinosaur? Or old, I don't know how old that show is now, but you can change from a circle to a square. Much less exciting than a person changing into like a lion or something, but pretty nifty nonetheless. Um, the really cool thing you can do is that shape tweens also work with gradients if you set them up right. So I'm going to set my circle to have a uh, radial a white to black radial gradient and in my square I'm gonna change this to a red to black radial gradient and now as I change from my circle to my square I have well this super cool transformation but let's say I just wanted to make like a glowy kind of ball effect well the shape uh, the shape tween can be, or sorry the shape tween can also be used for that as well now if you notice that I deleted my square I have this dotted line now in my shape tween. And I know it's a shape tween because it's green in the background. But I have this dotted line here saying, well, you're trying to change me from one shape to another, but there's nothing to change to. How, what, what do I do? What? Like, mind explosion. Well, when you do tweens, you have to have something on the frame afterwards for it to work, or sorry, the keyframe afterwards for it to work. So right now it's blank, so it's not happy with me. So I'm going to go ahead and right click, click remove frame 20. I'm going to insert a keyframe so that I get another copy of my circle. And now, if I go to frame 20, click on my circle. Uh, actually, let's just let's give it a... We'll leave it white. Leave it white. Let's go to our free transform tool. And let's just drag... Oops, that's the wrong one. Control-Z to undo. It's this one here. Let's drag this out so that my gradient gets expanded. And now, if I were to play this, it kind of looks like my ball is glowing. And I can even 
change the color on that to be let's say blue and now I'm fading I'm glowing to blue white well it's not the best effect in the world but if you if you take the time to really play around with it you get some really some really cool effects so if I just want it to fade from white to blue there we go so I know it's a shape tween because it's green in the background and on frame 20 it's actually trying to create another shape tween but we don't need that so I'm gonna right click click remove tween and that's how you get rid of tween so if I, if I didn't want this tween anymore just right click remove tween press control Z if I want it back to undo um, and yeah it's just something pretty nifty so I'm gonna go ahead and name this shape tween and just to show you what exactly this this thing is capable of I'm going to frame one I change my fill back to just red I'll go into frame 20 delete this use my pen tool click 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 bam put a paint bucket and here we go now we're fading from this circle to this monstrosity of a shape that I have taken the artistic liberty to generate for your worthy or maybe unworthy eyes I don't know you'll be the you'll be the the decider of that so that's about it for shape tweens it's just changing shape fill blah 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 I'm gonna lock this layer and create a new one and I'm going to call this a motion tween now motion tweens are a little different um, shape tweens work with drawings and not objects like movie clips motion tweens need a movie clip to work so if I were to go ahead and draw a squiggly line and have it make sure I have frame one selected I'm gonna right click and well it's saying hey I can actually create a motion tween so I'm gonna click on it oh no it says the selected item cannot be tweened you must convert this to a symbol in order to tween do you want to convert and create a tween well I don't want it to do it on its own so I'm gonna go ahead and actually um, convert it myself so I'm gonna go ahead and select my squiggly line uh, tap F8 and now I'm gonna turn it into a movie clip I'm gonna call it squiggly wiggly because that's what it looks like it should be called and now I'm going to go ahead and create a motion tween now motion tweens work a little differently than shape tweens or motion tweens where or sorry shape tweens it's asking well I'm starting at this keyframe what keyframe do I end at um, a motion tween is kind of its own thing and if I go into the library I have my squiggly wiggly right now I haven't really done any motion tweening so all I have is squiggly wiggly is beautiful actually let me go in squiggly wiggly is getting a little confused here with uh, my red fire looking shape in the back so now it's green so I have my motion tween and it works a little differently so shape tweens I have a keyframe I have to tell it which keyframe to end at and that's how that works but motion tweens are a little different motion tweens you basically just go and select which frame you want to be on so I'm gonna say on frame 5 this is the one I want to edit and I click on my selection tool. I'm just going to move this to the top. You can see now there's a little diamond um, next to my motion tween. And I know it's a motion tween because this background is blue. So on frame five, it's saying, oh, well, I have something there. I've made a change to the motion, and that's what I want to do. Um, if I were to go ahead and draw it to frame 20, I can move this dude over here. And now I have a motion tween where my green squiggly line is following um, this line you see here and I'll explain that part in just a second a uh, cool thing about motion tween is you can actually tell it to rotate how many times so if I want it to rotate once um, you can see by the time it starts and to the point where it finishes it's rotating once um, one time clockwise and I can make it counterclockwise if I want so it'll rotate in the opposite direction you can also click orient to path but you're probably not gonna see actually you can't see so if you click orient to path rotation doesn't work but I'll explain that in just a second let me undo control Z control Z so now I have this shape moving around with this rotation and the way I actually get to that property if I didn't mention it before you just have to click on your somewhere in your tween so if you click on the frame here it's gonna show up under properties so I have rotation set to one time running rotating counterclockwise that's cool and all but what's what if I didn't exactly want this uh, shape to be where it's at what if I wanted this shape to be somewhere else well I can actually move around this line here that it's created representing my motion 
Um, if I click on the frame itself, I can find where that path was actually going and I can actually move it around if I use my sub selection tool. So I'm going to take my sub selection tool and say, oops, if I can click on it, I just want this to be well, a straight line. So now you can see I've changed my point of rotation or not rotation, but my path of motion. And now my motion tween is moving my little guy in a straight line. Let's say I didn't want a straight line. Well, if you remember our convert to our sorry, convert anchor point tool on, from our pen tool video. So underneath the pen tool, convert to anchor point. I can click on one of these, not these little ones, one of these uh, places where I have actually get that to show. It's so one of these places where I've set a one of these diamonds, so basically a, a keyframe. Let me hide the shape tween, it's getting in the way. So I have these diamonds here that are a little bigger, and those are telling me that's where I've actually um, put the point where I've set a path of motion versus these little ones. Just like, well, this is where it's going to be in all these frames in between. So I'm going to go to my convert to anchor point tool, and now I can click and drag on one of these points, and now I get this curvy line here, just like we did with um, creating shapes using the pen tool. I'm going to drag all this stuff out. And now if I play my animation, I have my squiggly wiggly <laughs> rotating and flip flopping around. He has no idea what's going on. He is a lost soul. Um, so let's give squiggly wiggly a little bit of direction. Um, let's go ahead and not have him rotate. So he is not rotating. And let's just, well, now he's just kind of floating around in space. It doesn't really look realistic. And, Squiggly Wiggly has a head and he needs to kind of point to where he's going, right? You don't you don't walk back. Well, maybe you walk backwards and you're just weird, but I don't walk backwards. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and click Orient to Path. And now as my line changes, Squiggly Wiggly kind of changes with it. And maybe this is a bad example because I said his head was here. If I rotate him, let's, let's see if this is going to be nice enough to let me do this. So rotate 90 degrees. No, squiggly wiggly. Okay, if I rotate him now, he's going to, I'm undoing by pressing Control Z. If I rotate him now in the free transform tool, it's thinking that it's part of the motion tween. So it's just going to rotate him and try moving him and doing some more rotation. But that's not what I want. I'm going to go ahead and double click on squiggly wiggly. And I'm going to rotate him within his movie clip. So let's make it so that his head is facing to the right. And now he should slide along this path and he's facing whatever direction uh, the line is, is facing. And now it's not, it's not perfect. It, makes, it takes a little bit of, of time and effort to actually get that lined up. But if I had a better line here and I had um, maybe like you know 30 minutes to just sit here and have you stare at this screen and tell me how pretty Squiggly Wiggly is, um, I'd be able to do that, and yeah, that's good enough. You get the idea. So if I click Orient to Path, what it's going to do is going to point my movie clip in the direction of whichever way the line is going. So when the line's curving, it'll be facing this way, it'll face up, and then it'll face to the right. But what if I forgot to draw something now uh, with my movie clip? I'm going to go ahead and try and draw on my motion tween, and... <laughs> Current selection in layer motion tween is a tween span, which does not support drawing. Motion tweens do not let you draw or add things really once you've already created that motion tween. Um, it's for this, it's created for this squiggly wiggly movie clip, so it's only going to allow you to do things with that movie clip. You can't draw extra things to the stage. You can, however, go in and change your movie clip on the inside and maybe, you know, give him some beautiful blue eyes but as far as the outside goes when you're working with this motion tween you can't actually draw on it and the shape tween is very similar uh, where it's not going to let you draw but that's only under certain circumstances so the shape, oh, sorry I was not even on the motion tween so prove my point, I clicked, it's not letting me draw and shape tween is a little different in that sense um, it will let you draw, but only if you're drawing on a keyframe. So right now on frame 10, I don't have a keyframe. It's not letting me draw. But if I insert a keyframe and let's say I make all these crazy, I don't know, Dragon Ball Z type lines going around, 
it actually let me do that. So if you notice now in my animation, I'm going from a circle to all of these shapes and then back to my fire shape, which if you play around with the shape tool, you can get some really cool effects. Um, this is a good way of creating like an ocean or um, something along those lines. It's, it's just something you have to play around with. So to sum up everything I've talked about, I've shown you motion tweens and shape tweens. Shape tweens require keyframes for you to tell where what you're trying to change your shape to. So on this this keyframe, I have a circle. In this frame, I have all these other shapes. So I'm saying go from this keyframe to this keyframe, um, and that's using only drawing objects. Shape tweens only work with drawing objects. They do not work with movie clips or any other kind of object. Um, motion tweens, however work with movie clips and only movie clips so motion tweens you need to have a movie clip if not it's not going to work for you the other thing about motion tweens is that you do not need to tell it which keyframe to go to you just kind of have to create the tween for however many frames you want and then just go ahead and start moving it around it's pretty straightforward so that's about it for motion tweens and shape tweens at least on a basic level I'll be going over more about them. We're getting some more practice on these things in the future.